Hello, this is a demonstration video to project five called Traffic. Now in this project, one must implement a neural network to differentiate between 43 different traffic signs. And some example images include this, uh, 30 kilometers per hour speed restriction, or this 20 kilometer per hour speed restriction. Now, of course, this includes a lot of different traffic signs, for example, stop signs. So I will now demonstrate how well my implemented model it works in terms of accuracy and how well it performs in the verification data set to also prove that it is not an overfit. So I will simply run this code and I'll look at these results. Now, as you can see here, when it finishes loading the data set, as you can see now, you can see my model start to train and the accuracy is increasing. So I'll be back when all 10 epochs have finished processing. All right, now we're nearing the end of the training period. And I would like to just point out that I try to, as well as possible, model the results that, um, that are shown on the traffic page. And of course, these are very good. I mean, uh, I personally don't think that this training session will reach 96% accuracy in the verification data set and loss of 0 0.13 and I2, as well as these really short epoch periods. But I at least tried to get as close to that as possible. So now some things that we can analyze is that are that my training times are a bit slower, well actually three times slower than the results that are shown here, which is of course suboptimal and their accuracy is higher. But I believe for the fact that, well, I'm a student and uh, this was probably done on a very high level skill. Uh, I believe that I approached these types of results very closely and that I have an accuracy of 95.3%, whereas this one has 96% accuracy in the verification set, a slightly higher loss of 0 0.165, whereas this one is 0 0.1392. And overall, I believe my training times are not too bad. Also, I can ensure that this is not an overfitted data set, simply because, well, for multiple reasons. Firstly, when I'm going to look at how I configured my model, we'll recognize that I have a dropout rate set to 0 0.5. And here, I can also see that the training accuracy in the last epoch was lower than my final resultant accuracy, which seems to suggest that my model is able to generate as well for an unknown set of data. So now if we look at my implementation of my model, what I did is I started with a convolutional neural network and developed some kernel matrices for this. Of course, I fed it the input shape of 3030, even though I should have set that to input height and width of the object, and then three for the three color channels, red, green, and blue. Then I implement a max pooling layer that it pulls the images into some matrices of two by two. Then I flatten this image, as you can see here, and then I proceed to continue with the normal neural network by having a dense 512 neuron wide first layer, then down to 256. And lastly, my output layer is of course 43 nodes long, simply because there are 43 different options. And then I also define a dropout of 0 0.5, just to ensure that I'm not overfitting my data because when I was trying and testing what works better and what works worse, I noticed that oftentimes below 0 0.5, there was a drop in accuracy in terms of the verification set and the training set, which of course seems to suggest at least some level of overfitting in some situations. So I tried to prevent that by implementing a high dropout rate. Now what I can also comment on is that the number of kernel matrices that are developed also has a defining impact, although they are computationally complex. So I've tried running on 64 and 128 different kernel matrices that are generated. And although they did have a positive effect on the overall accuracy, that also led to a large impairment of the training time. The same can also be said for the dense neural network layers, which I also tested between the 64 and 512 range. Although this might seem slightly like overkill, and which is probably what led to my rapid increase in accuracy throughout time, whereas this one's rather slow, I couldn't find a way to develop a more accurate model than with um, less than 512 neurons in the first layer and only 32 kernel matrices that are used. Well, in terms of my activation functions, I consistently used ReLU, and then only for the convolutional neural network, I used TANH. I can't necessarily comment why some of these are better or worse, but also another thing to point out is that I compiled this with accuracy, which is why I could see that there. And I also, for my loss function, I used categorical cross entropy. So yes, this was my implementation of the Project 5 Traffic Neural Network. So bye.